Hello, everybody. Welcome to Little Josh Arms. I'm Alicia. If this is your very first time here, what I like to do is talk about all things crochet and drink a little bit of wine. And I have one of my favorite, most talented people in the world. She is the Alma Gurumi Queen. We have, whoops, hooked by Katie with an I, because she's special. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm um, pretty good. We were talking behind the scenes a little bit. I'm just pretending not to be hot right now. Yeah. Well, it's good. And August is just yuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where are you at? And how, what's the temperature? You said it doesn't get too bad where you are. It's not horrible. I mean, it's probably 85 out there right now, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. really windy today. But Colorado, I mean, we'll hit, you know, high 90s, but it's 15% yeah. humidity. So it doesn't, it's not as awful. It doesn't, it doesn't hit as hard. You're like in the attic. Is that like a yeah? <laughs> yeah, my peaks. office is above our garage. Um, nice. I know it's pretty cool. So we we bought the house with the the bonus room over the garage and walked into it, and I was like, "This is my new office." <laughs> so it's gonna be. Do great. you get? Does that get hot up there? I see you got the air conditioner unit that you put your name on. Does yes. it get hot? It, with that thing, it's pretty good. I mean, that thing will bring it down. If it's if it's ninety seven outside, I've probably got to run it pretty hard. Um, uh -huh. it's got turbo mode. So if I come in here and it's really hot, I'll turn it on turbo mode for like 10 minutes. And nice. I love that thing. I didn't even know they existed until we got this. And it's like a, it's a mini split. So it's got its own little like AC unit outside the house, just like a big AC unit, but it's like, little. Yeah. it's so cool. I love it. I need that in my life. Cause my bedroom is the attic and oh. my air conditioner be like, I think I can't. Oh, but we're off topic. Okay, guys. <laughs> So this is Katie. Katie, can you introduce yourself and tell people who you are, where they can find you and all that stuff? Yeah, I'm Katie. If you haven't figured that out yet. Um, my website's hooked by Katie with an I, like she said, dot com. Um, I'm a Amigurumi designer. Most of what I do is stuffed animals. Um, I like real big, crazy ones. I'm, I, I do some little ones, but most of mine are huge. Um, you know, 18 inch tall dragons and things like that. So um, that's my favorite. I like mythical creatures a lot. And so I design um, big Ami and then I teach uh, people how to make stuffed animals um, with both with videos and then like with classes. And so that's, that's where yes, I'm at. Oh my gee, I just forgot to link all your links down in the description box, but I'm gonna do that. I was about to pull out my phone and ask you a billion questions. And I can't find my phone. I didn't bring it with me. So, well, you want me to gab about something random? Okay, guys, you, you hear it? How did you find my phone? Hold on. Here, it's ringing. I always wish I could see around corners when I'm on camera. I'm always like, <laughs> okay, questions. Here we go. I am a professional. I did question one. Introduce yourself. Good job. Two. Well done. You made it all the way through qu to question two without even having notes. You're I doing know, better than me already. Can you, you see that bead of sweat? <laughs> oh, Lord. So, why you do you I'm love Alma Gurumi? I know. And I just started drinking. So, <laughs> why do you love Alma Gurumi? Oh, I've loved them forever. I. It's just kind of... it's built into me like I was uh talking to Pam about this the other day here oh Ugh, I was love your chair <laughs> thank you aren't they the greatest way fair man um so my grandma used to make these for me my great grandma she used to babysit oh, wow. me all the time and um when I'd leave her house she'd go well what do you want next time and I'd go like a turtle or something and she'd make me a turtle and they, there'd be a turtle waiting for me and the next time I'd be like I want a panda and she'd have me a panda waiting and they were all about this size and just little you know simple little guys but I had a collection of them and over the years they vanished and I'm down to two I have my pig Aww. and I have a panda bear and um but it's so funny because everyone's like you know how'd you learn to crochet crochet to me was stuffed animals like I didn't know what else to do with it except this yeah because that's all you see for me with my grandma crochet was blankets that's what grandma did question though did your grandmother have a pattern or she's like oh, no. got it. Nope. these were just thrown together 
I mean, look, but if you look at them, I mean, they're all just their balls attached to each yeah. other. His neck actually doesn't even have any decreases in it. It's just got a piece of string that's tied real tight. Oh, tied. <laughs> it's just tied real I mean, tight. She didn't have you. Fish. She didn't have you. <laughs> so you she want, you made yet. it work. And she, but she did a great job. I mean, she always, it was always fun. Like, look at her cute little, like, crocodile stitch style ears. Oh, no. I mean, she's, they're so fun. But like, yeah, so she would make me whatever I wanted. And I had a whole herd of little Ami critters before I even knew what it was. So so she the one that sat down with you and taught you how to crochet? What's funny is she tried. She tried to teach me how to knit. Like, I can remember her te trying to teach me how to knit. Um, but the I learned how to crochet from my cousin in college um, because we I was bored all the time. And so he taught me how to knit and crochet back and forth in straight lines so that I could sit in class and just do something mindless while I was sitting in those giant lecture yeah. halls and where it's like 150 people and you're all just like listening to some guy drone on about biology you know mm -hmm. so, so crochet yeah, exactly and so that was all I knew how to do it was just like back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um but you know then the very next thing I made was an owl which doesn't didn't look like an owl <laughs> Oh, I wish you still had it. I wish you had a picture. Uh, I'll have to find it, but I gave it to a friend, and her friend, uh, her son called it his frog, which shows how much it looks That's like an a bad owl. owl. Um, <laughs> um, and it was like this big and lime green, and um, but he still has it. It's so funny. He's he's the same age as my no, he's a year younger than my oldest, so he's fourteen, mm -hmm. and he still has this frog. <laughs> <laughs> this awful looking thing. That's cute. That's a memory. <laughs> it is. This next thing, this, re this reminds me of my next question. Lori, my favorite person in the world. She's a fave. She says she's scared of Amagurumi. Oh. That was going to be the question. Why do you think so many people are afraid of Amagurumi? It has a lot of elements that other types of crochet doesn't use. I mean, you know, you, we're used to working in the round to make like a hat or something, but we're definitely not used to then like closing that up and like stuffing it. Stuffing gets really like you think it's easy, just like stuff crap in there, but it gets all yeah. lumpy and messed up and like, ugh, like it just it's so then you make something and it never turns out the way you think it's supposed to look, at least mm -hmm. when you're first starting. Um, and so that's, I think that scares away a lot of people. And then I think the biggest thing that scares people away is sewing parts together. So, that so was another question together. down. <laughs> I'm telling you what I, my fear of Amagurumi was my fear. When I see people who are, you guys are artists to me, you're painting with yarn and hook. When I see a blanket, I know, or a hat working in the it's just something different with armor groomy because you're increasing and decreasing and it's intimidating, but it shouldn't be. And it shouldn't be intimidating for anybody else because you know why everybody that's watching right now, because there's this wonderful course called <laughs> Next Level Armor who was created by this wonderful person right here. Would you be able to tell us a little about, about this course that you've created to improve people's skills? Yeah, absolutely. Like that segue? <laughs> yes, excellent segue. Um, no, so um, I, I'm launching a course. It's called Next Level Amigurumi Design. And the idea is that um, all Amigurumi are made of the same pretty common shapes. They're pretty simple, really, when you break them down. Um, if you think about it, everything, every kind of Amigurumi is a tube of one form or another. It's either a tube that's getting fatter rather than skinny or staying skinny and then doing funny things, or we're making it twist or curve but it's still just a tube. And so if you can do that, um, I'm teaching people how to make them do what you want them to do. So make those tubes do what you want them to do and you can make anything you can come up with. Um, it's like you said, Ami is limitless. It's something that, you know, a sweater needs to have two sleeves and a head hole, but an Ami Gurumi mm -hmm. can be anything, like literally what anything. Do you uh, You're sculpting and, with yarn find that amazing and this course everything that's included with it you get a lifetime access to self-paced courses 50 lessons you know i got this stuff already for you oh yeah you mm -hmm. eight hours of video tutorials 50 pages of sample patterns worksheets practice tools exclusive community and monthly live events and networking with the wonderful miss katie right here hooked by katie and designer challenges to spark your imagination and creativity 
But <laughs> the course doesn't kid. start until tomorrow. So, but right now I have linked down in the description box below is the star pattern webinar. Yeah. So tomorrow, so to kick off the course, I wanted to help designers, you know, realize what, what the point is of needing to design something that is a little bit more complicated than this guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when, when you're designing, you start out with a ball and you think that if I just make a whole bunch of balls with a couple little variations, those are each a different pattern. But the truth is your 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 customers want more from you than that. Um, they're going to need that one time and then they can handle that on their own. Um, and you don't want your customers leaving you in the dust because they're moving on to something more complicated or more exciting. Um, so the STAR method is a test that I came up with. Um, for my own things when um, when I was, you know, learning to design and realizing what worked and what didn't, um, that allows you to test your pattern when it's still in the idea phase to see if it's going to be popular, if it's going to sell. Um, and it's simple things like, does it stand out enough? Um, does it reach your target audience? Things like that. So it's it's establishing a baseline for what's going to make your best-selling pattern a bestseller before you start crocheting and take the time to put into it. Why don't I do that? <laughs> Gotta sign up for your course. All right, guys. If you have <laughs> well, you'll get that for free for in the webinar, so you just have to come to the webinar for that stuff. So. <laughs> okay, I got to sign up for that. And I am too. I am too. And guys, make sure if you have any questions for uh, Hooked by Katie, make sure you put it in the comments and put question marks in front of it so I know to bring it to the front. Let's see. I don't have wine yet, so but yeah, I have uh, my white, my little pony cup for you. Why does that look so 80s? That looks oh, like the original is mega pony. Like, 80s. That's my ponies. <laughs> my ponies too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other ponies are not my ponies. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We so can't talk Somebody said, so "Yay, Jesus. Colorado!" Woohoo! I know, right? Okay. Like, what are some of the other things that are going to be covered in your course? As you're thinking about that, would you be able to? Sh I hope you have it near you. That cool board that you. Yeah, I have okay. it. Near. Um, so this is like so. The first part of the course, we're going to be talking about shapes and how they work. And so part of that is making yourself. Uh, it's called a degree of pointiness um, board. And so we're making cones at various degrees of pointiness and then marking them so that you have this for all your future designs. So say like you're wanting to make a dog and you're starting it at its nose, but you don't know how many stitches you want to increase out because you don't know how big around you want his nose to be or how round or how pointy. Well, your degree of pointiness board, you're like, okay, well, I want his nose to be about this pointy. So I know I need to do three increases per round to start his nose because, and I will get this result. So you can, you can know ahead of time the results you're going to get rather than like trying it and then, no, I don't like it and rip it out. Try it again. No, I don't like it and rip it out. So like it, the idea is to, to decrease the amount of test and tear that you have to do yeah. to make a pattern. Um, I hate test and tear. I always, especially with Amigurumi, it's awful because you end up wasting safety eyes and yarn. And that's like the most painful thing ever. Like, it's just like heartbreaking. <laughs> we have a good question. Here we go from Vivian. How long will your webinar be? Hours or different days, et cetera? So the webinar is, is an hour, about an hour long, and it'll be tomorrow at 10 o'clock um, mountain time. Um, so it'll be about an hour long. And then the, the course itself is self-paced, um, like Alicia was saying. So the course you can take as long or as short as you want to. Um, the beta testers have had it for just under three months. And I think there's only two people that have gone all the way through it. Um, mm -hmm. so it is possible to plow through it and get, you know, really far through it really quickly. Um, or you can work on it in your own pace and do your stuff, you know, use, when you get to a place where something is useful, you use it in a design and then come back to it when you're ready to move on. Um, but yeah, so the webinar will be an hour and then the course is however long you want it to be. <laughs> but I like that. I wanted to hop back onto your little, little thing. I love that cheat sheet board. It's like your pattern is pre-written. There's been so many times that I've started on, I'm like, I see the shape in my head and 
the stitch count just slightly off for the shape? Like, is it single crochet, three stitches, then increase? Or should I do four? I'm like, ah, what do I want? And you're just like, that's what I want. Exactly. And, 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 that's, and that takes the to test and tear out, at least of that phase. There's actually a whole bunch of other tools to take the test and tear out of other steps. So. Do you have any recommendations? This was one of my fears too, but I got special hooks for it. My fear is pain in my hands from small stitches. What you so do? I agree. I use really good, I use really high quality hooks. I use Furl's hooks, um, the Odyssey ones that are metal because on me with those tight stitches will break acrylic and plastic hooks pretty quickly. Um, especially if you're like angry when you're crocheting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, you know, rage crocheting and you're like, ah. My uh, pillow fell. Oh no, ah. Everyone can see how short you really are. No. <laughs> Let me, uh, uh, just to get high enough, I got 15 pillows on a folding chair. How it works behind the scenes. <laughs> here we go. Okay, I've got I'm my chair up. down as low as I could get it to try to hide my crazy lights up Ooh. here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Where are we at? Um, but yeah, yeah I, I, I use so I use really good hooks, and then the cool Ami doesn't have to be like DK weight tiny stitch yarn. Like everything I do is with worsted weight yarn. It's not tiny. Um, you know, it's big beefy yarn, and so. You know, and you can even make Ami if you really wanted to with like blanket yarn, which I think is like a thousand times harder than doing it with little tiny yarn because I don't like particularly having to use like my biceps to crochet. But um, just like, <laughs> my biceps, like, ha, <sighs> like that's a lot of work. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Any more questions? Oh my goodness, I'm just too hot over here. I'm trying to. Oh, I feel you. I'm tempted to turn my turbo on, to be perfectly honest. Turn it on. I'm dying too. Maybe you can cool me off from Colorado. Right? Please. I don't know. That thing's powerful, but I don't know if it's that powerful. <laughs> oh, but this okay. We just talked about sewing before. Do you have any tips on sewing your pieces together? So the best way to do it, especially if you're in a design mode, is to make them all in one piece. Um, use your mm -hmm. use your newfound skills to make them all in one piece. Um, but actually, you're going to run into times that you've got to sew stuff. It just is. Um, use yeah. your mattress stitches. So, you know, it's uh, if you have two things. You sew through this side, then this side, then this side, then this side. Yeah. Um, so use your mattress stitches to hold, to put things together. And then my best tip for attachments is to hold the piece where you want it. Let's see if I can find something random to... You do. I gotta still readjust my pillows. Not right. Like, <laughs> we'll just pretend. We'll pretend. I don't know. We'll pretend that this pig needs horn or needs a horn. I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um. So you put your piece where you want it, and then you use straight pins to mark all the way around it. Uh huh. And so if it's a great big piece, say you can use like a red pin here, and then pin it in the same place on this side. And then put a blue pin here and then pin it in the same place on this one. And you do that all the way around and you'll have color coded pieces that, with pins that line up. So then you just put your pins together and you just sew in a straight line from pin to pin all the way around. Pinning? Okay, I know that's common sense. No, it's not. That's the thing. It's not really common sense because you think we can just eyeball this stuff. But when it comes down to it, if you break it into math, it really, really does help. Math is yeah, good. Math is not the enemy. It's not. I was afraid. I still am afraid of math, but I'm okay with crochet math because it's not trigonometry. It's okay. The numbers are simple. Only thing you have to do is know your multiplications, what's divisible by something, and that's it. Yep. And you're good to go. But yep. it still stinks doing it. Miss Vivian says, so... You will show us how to make this beautiful things and then we will get some worksheets or something similar. Is that right? I am so excited tomorrow. I'm excited for tomorrow too. So tomorrow's webinar is going to be about what it takes to what these, what a high quality pattern or what a best selling pattern needs to be a bestseller. Um, the course is going to be how you can make that happen, how you can uh, meet all of those criteria with um, the skills you're gonna learn in the course. So what the course is going to be is we're gonna start with the simple shapes. We're gonna start with our samples. 
Um, the one I was showing you earlier is actually one of the skinny parts shapes. So we're actually making parts that are skinny so that you have mm -hmm. these so that when you just need to decide how skinny something needs to be, you've got samples so you can decide that ahead of time. Um, we're going to do a lot of that kind of stuff. So we've got a lot of samples to make for different shapes and then different methods. So we're going to do branching methods where you take one piece and branch it into multiple ones, merging methods where you take multiple pieces and merge them into one. And then curving methods where we're going to actually make a tube curve around and do things. Uh, oh, okay. oh <laughs> then we're going to smash them all together in the advanced section and do some really cool different kinds of merges, different kinds of branches, and different kinds of curves so that you have all the possible shapes you could think of to be able to make what you're doing. And then in our writing section, we're putting it all together again. And you're going to take the knowledge of the shapes you have sketch out your design and pick which shapes are going to be needed to make the shapes in your design. So you have your all of your shapes over here and all of your samples and you can draw your picture, say it's like a dog and say, all right, for this, I'm gonna start his leg at the knee and I'm gonna branch out and put his foot over here and his leg over here. And you can write that down. And so you plan it all out ahead of time and do it all in advance. And then you can just start, you basically, test your pattern with your prototype. You write the whole thing and then follow your own pattern and see if it works. Okay, guys, make sure you sign up for the star pattern webinar. Even if you're not, you're afraid of amigurumi, I feel like even myself as, as a so-called professional designer, I'm not. These tips are useful. All these things that you're doing are useful. So guys, make sure you sign up for the free star webinar below. And tomorrow when the course opens, please make sure you sign up for her, uh, the course next level Amigurumi. Can I tell them what's included one more time? You bet you read it. Okay, here we go. So you don't have to memorize it. I didn't want you saying, what did I say? Okay. You get a <laughs> lifetime access to self-paced courses. 50 lessons that are self-paced that you can do at your own time. We have eight hours of video tutorials, 50 pages of sample patterns, worksheets, and practice tools, exclusive online community and of fellow designers, monthly live events and networking, and designer challenges to spark your imagination and creativity. All that linked down below in the course, but make sure you sign up for the free webinar if anything else, sign up for that. Katie is amazing. As you can see, all this information she's spitting at us is golden it's really it's it, cha it, it changes the whole pattern it changes the whole design process it makes it a lot less stressful i Streamline. i oh yeah me like i i'm trying to get rid of like i'm trying to prevent other designers from having 700 heads they don't like like in a pile in their room like <laughs> I don't know how many times my husband would come home from work and be like what'd you do today I'm like I made and ripped out seven heads I have nothing to show hey, for my entire day's work. <laughs> you have like a graveyard of amigurumi just hits. It's awful. <laughs> it's so depressing. And so it's like, I don't want to do this this way anymore. I don't want to do the test and tear. And so I figured how out how to do you not guess. Do it anymore. I mean, you are a professional, so you crochet faster. But before you create your technique, when you're making 80 hits, how long would a pattern take with 80 hits compared to what you do now <laughs> that you streamlined it? So when I first wrote Vincent, he's my, the one that everybody knows most. Mm -hmm. Get him. Whoa, this guy. So when I first wrote Vincent, he took me eight months from the first time that, <laughs> from the first stitch to, to finishing him and do, starting photography, he took eight months. Um, in 2021, I did, I put out 12 patterns in 15 months. User compared so, to eight months, compared to eight months in for one design, and the ones that I put out weren't simple patterns. The ones that I put out that year, let's see, were so take probably a month and a half, a month guy, and a quarter. Yeah, mm -hmm. my Kelpie, I did Toby, he's my baby, my little baby. Oh, that is detailed. He's so fun. Oh, and I like the way the tail wait, stop, don't put him away yet. I love the way the tail wraps up like he's being cradled mm -hmm. that and that's all one piece so that's one of the things we learned how to do is create the curves and then he's all his tail and his body are all one piece 
looks amazing. And, some, and then his claws are all one piece. We're going to learn how to do that. Uh-huh. And we're going to learn how to do these. So it's, <laughs> it's learning how to make the shapes that you need to make what's in your head real. Hmm. Well, one of my uh, favorite people, Dee. I always say favorite, but I don't. These people I'm saying are my favorite are actually my favorite because I know my people. Dee, Dee she's awesome. Not a question. I just wanted to know. I just signed up to the course. So excited. Oh, I can't wait to see you at the webinar tomorrow. That'll be so fun. So, yeah, the, I, the doors aren't open for the course just yet. So it'll be officially open at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Probably more like 1030-ish. Um, <laughs> still sign up for the webinar. But yeah, get the all the information from the webinar. So TDSM, another favorite. I know my TDSM. Uh, does eyelash yarn work well for furry animals in amigurumi? It can. It depends on the, the fur that you're looking for, like the style of fur that you're looking for. If you're going for something a little bit more haphazard and a little more scruffy, then it can work really well for that. Um, it's very hard to work with, though. So that's always my uh my advice is if you if you're gonna work with funny textured yarn just keep in mind that it's funny textured um and that amigurumi tend to have a lot of of detailed decreases and increases and a lot of counting and so if it's something you can't see your stitches well um that's just harder to work with there's other ways to make fur um that's going to be a mini course that comes out actually wait, wait, probably in the next what? few months there's other ways to make fur. Oh my gosh, there are so many ways to make fur. So Just give me one way. Give me something I'm going to say, what? Uh, well, so loop stitches for one thing. So you know how to do yeah. a loop stitch, right? You wrap it around your finger mm -hmm. and then do your single crochet. Well, you can yep. actually cut those. So once they're already done, you can cut them and they look kind of like short fringe. And then you so can you separate them out and they'll either be curly or you can brush them and they'll be fluffy. Or you can leave them as loops and they're like loopy like a sheep. See, I was about to say, you're giving me information I know. Another common sense thing, since you cut, I'm like, I never thought to cut it. And then and brushing them out, out makes a huge difference. Like, wait, oh, this chick, yeah. Oh, as you walk away, I'm going to say, oh, go ahead. Oh, God. So here's, <laughs> here's not brushed out. Right. And then this is what she looks like brushed out. Shut the front door. <laughs> so it's the exact same technique, but this was cut the loops and brush them. What magical this. magic are you hooking on? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, let me say hi. Who, okay, somebody super chat it. Let's see who super chat it real quick. It was. Yay, super chat. Thank you. Love that dragon. Thank you so much, Lori Murphy. You get a cheers. I'll cheers with my sad. Cheers. I'll and today we're not doing the Wheel of Patterns because I forgot to put it up. So I'm so sorry. But they, if Lori, you know, if you want a pattern, you know you can get whatever you want from me because you're one of my favorites. You can email me whatever you want. But I forgot to bring up the wheel today because this is all about Katie. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Shoot. Uh, between yarn and safety eyes, or it depends on the project, what do you prefer? Oh, well, I'm a safety eye girl, but that's because I tend to do things that need to, that are just sitting on a shelf and are just kind of there for art purposes. <laughs> They're uh -huh. not getting as much, you know, abuse or love. Um, if it's a big kid, I'll still use safety eyes. Like all my son's stuff are safety eyes um, yeah. because he wants them that way. But kid like little kids I'd much rather have sewn on eyes um just yarn eyes that I don't have to worry about scratching in the washing machine even though there's tricks to fix it um they get scratched in the washing machine so that's always a bummer and obviously there's the choking the the even though they're safety yeah. eyes and even though they're great um kids under three can still somehow manage to break them and swallow them so um I try to avoid them for stuff like that. And then there's situations where you just don't need them. I mean, I've got a lot of pieces where my creatures have their eyes closed or like they, so they don't need them. Um, that make you work one more time? Yeah, sure. What is on your yarn? I'm pointing like you can see what I'm pointing at. The, it's like a bird in the back of oh, you. Oh yeah, you that's, show? he's a phoenix. Hmm. Oh 
small lady. Oh, I like the little danglies. Yeah, he's a phoenix. I think, so, okay, I like of. the dragon, but I think I, this might be my favorite because I love the feathers and the <laughs> dangly tails that doesn't look like, I like that. Fun, right? Oh, no, this one's the, pull these up your are going in last that game for course, actually. So <laughs> it's so funny because I didn't even think about, um, it wasn't until the beta testers started asking about things like that, feathers and fur. And so we started, we've already got, um, started out a mini course that will be added on. Um, it, it will be <laughs> available later on. So, um, but it's going to be fur feathers and fringe. And so it's going to be all of that stuff. That's the way you get the perfect name for feather and fringe. You get all the Fs. <laughs> As we're talking behind the scene right now, I realized I didn't have any of your links. So I'm copying from the last live stream that you were on and putting it okay. in. So guys, if you'd like to follow along to this pattern right here, I'm going to link everything about Katie down in the description box so you can find her. Yeah, and, and all the patterns, everything I've been showing off is, they're all patterns on the website. Um, and all my patterns are free text-only versions on my website. So you can go get them for free in their text-only version, or you can buy the premium one, which is like my loaded up with pictures ones. Step by step, everything. Oh, yeah. I think there's 75 pictures in Vincent's pattern. <laughs> so it's I mean, a you're going to need it for all the curves. I appreciate If I'm working on a pattern, sometimes you're stuck. And all those extra pictures is nice. I'm bad with that. I do pictures, but I put timestamps at the very end of my, oh, I do video. You can't cool. do that. You can't do that. Oh, it yeah. would, if I did a video for these, it would be like so ridiculously long. Like it'd be something you sat there and watched all day long while you were at work or something. Oh, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, and guys, if you'd like oh, to sign up, I always mention this. If you're just watching and tuning in now and wonder what we're talking about, we're talking about all things Amagurumi. And if you learn to like to learn how to create a star pattern yourself, why don't you sign up for the free webinar given by Hook by Katie? That'll be linked down in the description box below. And if you have any questions for our wonderful Katie, make sure you put question marks in front of it, like our wonderful smart friend Heather right here. And I will bring it to the front and read it and Katie's going to answer. Is there a pattern for the Phoenix? You betcha. His name is Ember. Um, and he is on the website and in my Etsy shop and on my Ravelry shop and just about everywhere. Um, so, yep, his name's Ember. So e M B E R. <laughs> and her links is down in the description box below. So, is there anything you've ever created and finished that you hated? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, so many things. <laughs> In fact, I had my VA take down a whole bunch of stuff off my website from back like a hundred years ago that were really, really? that looked a, a lot like this. Um, that oh, aren't too good it, now. But this isn't my style anymore. This isn't what people come to me for anymore. Yeah. And so those came down. Um, and there's like a couple things here and there. I am not very good at humanoids. Perfectly <laughs> to be perfectly. <laughs> Me either. I am just not very good at them. I'm, I'm, I'm never satisfied with human faces the way that I get them. Um, and so I tend to stick to animals. So the things that I have that are human, I'm kind of like. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, <laughs> just because I never thought about it. Can you show me another face? Bring the Phoenix back up. People don't understand. Let me. How does your brain work a face? Well, it's a lot about, it's just looking at your pictures of animals. What are your inspirations? So his little thingies are kind of banged up because he's been leaning against mm -hmm. my ceiling. Um, I, I'm a firm believer that everything needs eyebrows. So, because <laughs> I think eyebrows. Firm believer. Yeah, yes. Because I think bug-eyed creatures look ridiculous. Like, I think if they don't have eyebrows, they look like, ah, like they look scared or something. Um <laughs> <laughs> so oh. everything has eyebrows so even this guy like see him he just has to have something right? yeah i see oh yeah the little mm -hmm. so they have to have something that and then it's kind of cool because like with him he's kind of grouchy because he's a kelpie and they're not in mythology they're not a very nice creature um <laughs> they're kind of a, a a angry demon horse that lives in rivers um so i can <laughs> So I can make his eyebrows angry or I can tweak them and make, you know, make him happy. 
By the way, Miss uh, June, I just put it in the chat so you can find it. Sign up for the free start. I should have did that before, but I got it in the chat now, guys. So please click up on it. It's free. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot of information from free. I do all the time. It's a ton mm -hmm. of information too. Like I, yeah, it's, okay. a, it's a lot is, of good, useful stuff. This isn't about uh, writing patterns or anything. For those who are maybe like selling amigurumi, how do you usually ship your amigurumi oh, when you used God. to sell yours? So I used to put them in a box and I'd put like, you know, I'd pat them like crazy with tissue paper or something. Watch watch out for colored tissue paper, though, because a wet box can turn colored tissue paper into food coloring dye on your potentially white stuffed animal. Another I learned thing, that. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> I learned that Did one. Somebody message you? Um, what? Did somebody message you like? It was thankfully it was a friend, and so and mm -hmm. she and it washed out. But it was like, oh my gosh, I felt so bad because he was like blue. Um, it was bad, but no, I would just pack them with tissue paper, and then I always write a little note in there that says like, um, something like you know, phew, that's been a long journey. I'm so glad I'm home, or something like that in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. if, especially if they had to go really far or something. Um, well, yeah, everybody's usually when yeah. they like ship off their amigurumi. You amigurumi artists treat them like your children. Like oh, my it's, it's hard. getting it's adopted. Hard. It's half you the reason I had to stop doing it because I couldn't get rid of them. I couldn't let them go. It was so sad. <laughs> and I mean, Did it was fun because they go to cool places, but it's still like, oh, it was hard. So when you used to sell, when did you decide? This is just a question that I want to know. When did you decide to stop selling and go directly into pattern design? What uh, was that? Design was kind of always going to be where I ended up because I, I, my background's in publishing. So my, I went to college for literary magazines and journalism, basically. So I um, went to college to crochet because you were bored. <laughs> that is, <laughs> no, that is what I did in college. What I actually got a piece of paper that says I know how to do apparently is right. <laughs> um, which I, I have a hard time believing. You made but, me snort. Um, Good job. <laughs> but, but like, yeah, so I knew I was going to publish because it was just my, like my mental, you know, you put something on paper, it needs to go to a magazine or something because what else you can do with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I really, I, it was partially the emotion of selling the physical art and being like, oh, this is like really hard and partially just the time and the wear and tear on my hands. Um, mm -hmm. I crochet a lot now, like I'll, you know, three, four hours a day probably. But when you're doing inventory for a craft fair or when you're doing like a custom order for three dragons or what that's got a deadline on it, or, you know, it's like, deadlines, I hate that, is, that is the worst. And so I couldn't, I just couldn't do the stay up till 2 AM, you know, put, take painkillers and keep going kind of crocheting. Um, I needed something I could stop when I hurt. <laughs> were you able to uh, keep your amigurumi? You don't have to tell me what you sold yours for, but were you able to keep your amigurumi prices up or was it, did you find it difficult? Because when I started, I had to tell, I had to find a completely different clientele. I'm like, listen, I know you don't appreciate, I know it's this big. I know it's this big, but it took me a while to do this. Mm -hmm. That was, that's a very hard line. And I think all I mean, like sellers start out being like, oh, well, this is only worth like 25 bucks. And so then they sell it for that. And, and then they like pushed themselves into a corner of, okay, now my stuff has to be comparably, comparably priced across the whole collection. And it just, mm -hmm. it bites you. And so I think that's why a lot of Ami designers stop selling products because they can't, they, they do it to themselves by accident. Um, mm -hmm. Like I always, I started doing a thing where if I got an order for something and it was a pattern I'd never followed before, I would tell I them I needed, little. I would tell them I needed an hourly to follow the pattern first mm -hmm. um, to see how long it took me. And then I would charge them what it, what it was going to cost to actually make the thing. Because if you, you know, you might look at it and be like, oh, it's only going to take me like three, four hours. And then you charge them three, four hours labor and it actually takes you 15. And it's like, oh my gosh, it's like the worst pain ever. <laughs> you know how many times where it was the very first, you've, like you said, you've never made it before. And you're like, oh, 
this is $75. And you're working on it. hour 32, frog 55. I'm like, I'll never make this again. And you just have, since you told him the price, you just gotta, uh. So it starts that's to take smart. the joy Let's out get... of it. It starts to take the joy out of it. So I got to a place where I really like, I love making things one or two times and then mm -hmm. moving on to my next exciting adventure. So like I have three Vincents and that's enough that are mine. I have three. I think that's what's I'm great like, about <laughs> being able to write a pattern. You can still enjoy crochet pattern. Okay, guys, for the layman's out there. That, that Was that ins, uh, insult? I hope not. But guys who aren't pattern writers. Okay. But you need to learn how to be a pattern writer. It can be... I'm, hold on. I just lost my train of thought. Have you ever done that in the middle oh, of the yeah. city? <laughs> well, you were feeling guilty for calling them layman and then you freaked out. No. Um, so... <laughs> no, but, uh, oh, learning how to write a pattern. Yeah. I'm, but that's where you make money. Yes, it's it great is. to sell individual products. But when you write a pattern, even if you're not trying to be rich and famous, put that pattern out there. That little one pattern can make you five bucks a month. You don't know. Just five mm -hmm. bucks a month. Those 55 patterns could make you 2,000 bucks a month. There it's worth learning how to write a pattern. Even if you don't want to be a businesswoman, you can put it out there or just have it for the future. It's just nice to learn tips and tricks of the trade. Well, and if you have your own original designs and you're a product seller, your brand stands out. Whereas if you, if you don't, you know, if you make somebody else's things and you have them in a booth, you're not pulling, you're not drawing people to yourself. You're drawing mm -hmm. people to all of those other brands. And so you, you know, if you create your own brand for your products, then if you want to remain a product seller, you are establishing your brand. You're establishing what people can recognize. Then yeah. you're going to need to write it down for yourself, right? To make them over and over again. Mm -hmm. So why not know how to make know how to write them down from the get go, and still not have to test and tear your new products? I mean, it it works for product sellers too. We actually had a conversation. My one of my beta testers is a product seller that she went to a comic convention, and somebody came up to her and had seen one of the things that was like up on top of her, you know, one of her really nice demo pieces, and was like, yeah. "Oh, I saw you last year because you had that piece here, and it was so cool." Well, she hadn't been there last year. It was somebody else's, somebody else that had made that oh. thing from the pattern she followed. And that was when she was like, I have to make my own stuff. I need to start yeah. designing my own stuff because other people are making all the stuff I'm making too. And so I don't stand out anymore. Yeah. Nobody remembers. Have you ever seen your work in the wild? Oh, well, yeah. It's, it's the best for... feeling ever. Are you kidding? I love it. I love it. So many. <laughs> okay. So... I hit a good spot. Go ahead. <laughs> So, so many, but so it's so funny because it's a fight that I get into with designers. They're like, well, I don't want to see people selling my finished stuff. And I go, why? You don't have time to make it. Why? Like, <laughs> you don't have time to make all these things and go out and sell mm -hmm. them and then still keep designing. So yeah. let other people do it. Let other people take it and make money with it and let them still market could. for you in the process. I actually had somebody that used to make, I had these little tiny baby dragons and she used to make them to promote her book that was about dragons. So she's an author and she would go and she'd make a whole bunch of them to set around her table. Mm -hmm. And um, she had a stack of my business cards and she, and I would see an uptick in sales for that pattern when she was at conventions. So that's, uh, that's... it can really help your business to let people sell your stuff. Or if you happen to be like Katie's grandma, who said, hey, what would you like me to make you next week? A turtle? Oh, yeah. You got the turtle pattern in your head. You don't have to make a whole bunch of circles and sew them together. You got Katie to teach you. And it's just going to be in your head. And guys, make sure you sign up for the course. It'll be linked down below. And starting tomorrow at, what you say, the doors open at 10? Yes, 10 o'clock Mountain okay. Time. Okay. 10 a.m. Mountain, Mountain Daylight Time. time. And don't worry, I'm going to post this on my Facebook, I'm going to paste it on my Instagram, and I'm going to paste it on YouTube when this drops. So I'm going to leave the link so you all guys can sign up for this wonderful, amazing course. Oh, Miss Donna had a question for you. Is it difficult with parting with something crocheted so beautiful? Oh, 
Yeah, it's the like I I had a really hard time putting them in boxes, especially because they would all when I was doing products, I they all got a name and a birth certificate and like I I mean <laughs> they they got a little birth certificate that said the day they were finished and like they all had a name when on their listing and so it was like saying goodbye to some like saying goodbye to one of my children and putting them in a box and be like bye have a good life think about <laughs> so, amigurumi. Oh. if you're shipping amigurumi out i feel like somebody's always going to appreciate amigurumi more than they do a blanket does that make sense? I think they're a lot less likely to end up in a closet at the very, I mean, you know, they're probably going to end up on a shelf. That's fine. But that's where most yeah. of mine belong anyway, is on a shelf. So, um, you know, I'm happy for them to be on shelves. Okay. Donna has another one or a comment. People who are not creative minded do not see the time and material place in making items. It's they don't. True. And it's, it's all about your target audience. Art. Mm -hmm. it's all about who your target audience is if you're trying to if you're going to a flea market where everyone's expecting walmart prices and trying to sell a 150 dollar mm -hmm. stuffed dragon no one's no one's there looking for that so you know they're not going to be willing to pay it and they're going to think it's outrageous because you're in the wrong place um but i always tell people tiffany sells a, a like a solid gold paper clip that's like this big for like and it's like 300 400 bucks you're worth more than that. And well, and I'm like, if they can sell a paperclip for $400, <laughs> like it's all their audience will is buying that paperclip because they know who to market to. And know it, guys, never underprice yourself. You as crocheters know each one of these stitches is made by hand. And yes, you're going to have these customers like I can't get you know, you can't get this dragon at Walmart. Go ahead and try. It's going to be there's not there. You can't even get a knock. Off. They can't. Yeah, they can't. So at least with Amigurumi, they believe with like a blanket. Oh, I can get that at Walmart. I'm like, you can't make crochet by machine. You can get something similar that's crappy. But yeah, yeah you can get junk, but. But that sometimes they're just wanting a deal. They're not wanting art. Yeah. Lori says, so the course is 12 p mountain time? No, no but it's you can explain. 10 a.m. mountain time. So um, that's when the course opens. But the, the webinar opens. Yeah, the course is anytime you want it to be. The webinar is at 10 a.m. tomorrow, and the course doors will open tomorrow at 10 a.m. So what it is, is you, you come to the webinar and you learn some extra stuff. You learn some some new things about about why it's a good idea to be able to design your own patterns, why it's a good idea to have these skills for your business and for uh, for your own artistic um, endeavors. And then I'm opening the doors to the actual full course and saying, here's your chance to go learn the stuff so that what we learned over the last hour is something you can employ in your business. Hmm. Let's see. And guys, remember, we're in the next 12 minutes. We got 12 more minutes with our wonderful Katie. If you have any questions about Amigurumi, about what's going on in this free webinar course to start patterns, right now, put question marks in front and put in a comment right now so Katie can inform you on what's going on right now at this very moment. And just one more. I think Donna's going to start becoming one of my favorite. You're actually participating in this live. She says, oh, my goodness. My mom always asks why I don't part with my items. Oh, I just made it's something. hard. It's like it's it's a piece of you. Art. Oh, my gosh. I don't remember where I read it, but something somebody said art is breaking off a piece of your soul and putting it in on paper. It was a painting thing. But in our yeah. case, it's breaking off a piece of your soul and putting it in a stuffed animal. It's hard it's hard to let go of that i get it i don't like i if anybody tried to buy vincent i'd laugh in their face like <laughs> i'm like are you kidding oh. he is my child no <laughs> you got picture oh i meant to this is comment just random when you sent me your graphics for you know this that picture of you what sitting in the grass just with your amigurumi Chef's kiss. I have I'm an amazing here. photographer friend that is just phenomenal. And she gets me. She's a cosplayer and a she's a geek just like me. And I was like, you know the scene in World of Warcraft when the blood elf is holding the dragon thing and it's looking all and she goes, Oh my gosh, yes, I know exactly what that is. We're doing that. 
wow, somebody you just click with. Yep, doing it. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty funny. Okay, back to my new favorite Donna, because Donna is participating. If you guys want to be like Donna, comment down below. Katie True. I'm studying interior design and then studio of arts. I'm glad to hear what I was taught in school is in place. You betcha. <laughs> Absolutely. Lori, what is your favorite type of fiber to use? Good question. It is a good question. Um, I'm all about acrylics, partially because when I got started, that's what I started with because making products to sell, I wanted them to be washable and not mm -hmm. fade and not shrink and not stretch. So that was something I knew people could throw in their washing machine. Um, but now it's, I like acrylics because they come in a billion different colors. And the colors are so saturated. I was just, I had a live stream so last I'm, week about cotton and cotton. Somebody made the point that why is cotton always so muted? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Look at that acrylic behind you. It is popping on the wall. That beautiful. Right. Color. It just, it does. It just, it comes in so many more colors. And when you're making mythical creatures or something, I need, like, I need a bunch of different colors. I can't just have your standard, you know, Roy G. Biv and call it good. So, uh, yeah. Can, gotta, this is a personal question on myself. I, I always say I don't have an imagination. I am good with shapes. I can see shapes. I can't match colors for the life of me, my style of clothes, I wear onesies. I call them onesies. Uh, oh yeah, they're the best. Rompers, rompers. Or jumpers. Cause I can't put clothes together. So I- First of all, you can. You, <laughs> thank you. The fact that- <laughs> You're just- How's your brain work? It's, a, it's a limiting belief. Don't know. <laughs> oh, you're such encouraging. I know. But Sorry, it's your, the coach you thing. Are you seeing these in your head beforehand? Like, the colors sometimes I don't see, or I'll see something super, what I feel is like kind of contrived. And so I'll try to get away from that color. Like when I think of a griffin, I think of, you know, a gold griffin with brown wings. And so then I'm like, okay, what can I do differently? Well, both of my griffins are gold griffins with brown wings. So I didn't do a very good job <laughs> of getting away you from that. Not to. So sometimes it's kind of eh. But a lot of times I'll just go and take um, my inspiration pictures or my vision board with me to a store and set it next to the yarns that I like to use and see what sticks out. Um, okay. I'm back on in, inside your brain again. The phoenix. The tail. Was that in your brain? That was in <laughs> I, your brain? So I wanted, in my Wait, brain, I wanted a, just the tail. She I wanted a fire <laughs> peacock. So I wanted a fire peacock. That's what I wanted, like in my head. And so that's what his tail, his feathers are essentially peacock feathers. Yeah. And so like, yeah. So when I was designing him, I was like, I want a peacock on fire. It was kind of what I was thinking. You're, so I'm that's just, kind of what I tried to make beautiful. Like. And then I, I tried to make him look like I looked up fire. Well, it's darker in the middle and light toward the edges so I wanted his wings to look like fire so just... I'm not trying to toot your your horn I'm tooting your horn <laughs> the fact that your brain says okay this will be the tail and I'm putting this around the edges a little pico stitch right here and then I'm going to do this with my brain is like granny square back and forth <laughs> knitting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the, it's pictures. It's all vision boards and pictures and breaking stuff down. You know, I had actual pictures of peacocks setting out so I could figure out how I wanted to do them. And I mean, you know, it's not, you don't know the picos are going to be in there. You don't know that stuff's going to be there until you decide, you, you know, okay, here's the texture that I want to do. And if you have the tools to make that texture, you know, my options are this, this, and this. So I use one of them and make what I'm trying to do. You still have a very nice brain. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Deidre says, how do we pick the right people or audience who is willing to pay the price we deserve for our amigurumi or crochet items? Think, so I always tell people, think about your number one customer. Think about your perfect customer that buys everything you ever make, leaves you five-star reviews, like raves about you all the time. And then like narrow that person down to a one person 
like an individual mm-hmm. person that you can see in your mind. Where do they live? How old are they? Do they have kids? What do they do for a living? Get to know that one person mm-hmm. and then tailor all of your marketing like you're talking to that one person. Jesus. Is this in your course? What the hell? <laughs> it is in part of my course, but it is, it's kind okay. of, okay. it's, you know, target audience. It's actually, it's going to be in the webinar a little bit. And we're going to talk about target audience a lot, but you, oh. you find your one person and you push, you, you discuss, like you, you push all of your thoughts onto that person. You don't, you don't try to say, Hey, everyone, because you're not talking to everyone. You're talking to, mm-hmm. like in my, my case, my avatar's name is Zoe. And so like, I think I'm like, if every email I write can start with dear Zoe, I'm good. Uh-huh. Like, cause that's what I'm going for. Okay. So, yeah. yeah but, but that makes sense. I, I, somebody always like write down who your target on. I'm, I try to write down who it is. I'm like, okay, this and this, and I'm assuming, but I never thought the person who always buys my items when I was selling uh, physical items, I did have that one girl who could not get enough of my work. She was probably giving me like 50% of my income just because she loved crochet. I needed to, I switched over to being a YouTuber, but at the time I probably could have switched over to focusing on people like her. I probably could have kept some more money. (laughs) So, oh, but next question. What's your favorite brand? Of what? I'm guessing yarn. Was she the one who asked Probably. for the yarn earlier? I have a real weird thing with Red Heart with Love. Um, super Saver is always oh. kind of, eh, you know, it's Super Saver. But it's it comes in a gazillion colors, so I still use it. But with Love is, like, fluffy and squishy and, like, just one of the ones that I love to just pick up in the store and squeeze. Um, so I really like that one. And then Paint Box has gotten me really, their Paint Box Erin comes in so many cool colors. Oh, so many. Once it was years ago. I don't remember the feeling of it. It's, it it's not, I mean, it's not, it's acrylic. So 100% acrylics yeah. aren't going to be like, you know, mega luxurious. They're definitely not going to feel like cashmere, but um, it it's soft and it works really well. It works up really nicely, but I love how many colors it comes in. I love that there's like four or five different options for like turquoise teal range. Yeah, You know, it's not just dark and light. There's mint mm-hmm. and there's teal. And those are your only two options. No, there's like a bunch of them in between. And it's so fun. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> when you talk about acrylic, I'm not bougie about my yarn. I am basically a yarn whore. I would be <laughs> like, ooh, are you calling me yarn? You're only $1.99? How do you do it? I know, you right? know? <laughs> yeah, I've been using a whole lot of a uh, big twist. It's the value yarn from Joann's and I mm-hmm. really like it. I'm really surprised how well it works up. And it's like the colors. I mean, I'm all for color. That's, that's what I'm looking for. 90% of the time. Her hair that was made with big twist yarn. Oh, I love it. Would you be, would you be mad if I, it will take me exactly 30 seconds to get it. Go I'll run. A question that you can ask. Wait, out. <laughs> Let me pull up a question, and then you can answer it. Uh, do 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 do. What's a good question? I've ran out of questions. What can I ask you so we don't be like doll on a? So tell people like about that. your course. The beginning, because somebody might have just showed up. Tell them about your course. All right. Oh. So tomorrow at 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, I am launching. Um, well, we'll, there will be a webinar, a free webinar. It's free to attend and come and learn all about what it takes to make and write uh, best-selling amigurumi patterns and create best-selling amigurumi designs. Then after the webinar, if you've decided that you like my teaching style and you like what I'm saying, then you, the doors will be open to join my full-size um, comprehensive course, which will teach you everything from <laughs> tiny little shapes, learning how to make a variety of different shapes to putting them together to make really crazy things. You want to see one of the really crazy things we're doing? Yeah. We're making... Bottom half of the body. Yeah. We're making bottom up quadrupeds. So when you need to make feet that are complicated and fun and you need to make them first, but you still want a one piece creature, you can connect all your legs and your belly in one piece and you have right. a one that piece, you learn completely one piece body. So 
this is what you're going to learn in the course. You're going to start with how to make the shapes. You're going to start with how to pick the angles you want to do, pick the pointiness, degree of pointiness of things, and then how to put all the elements together to do whatever you can think of. Or in this particular case, a, a, a body that's all one piece, because I wanted him to be a certain way. Now that Katie showed her awesomeness, I don't want to show my bag anymore. I want to show your bag. Thanks. <laughs> Big twist is the best. <gasps> no. Oh, I saw that one. I saw your your yeah. video for this how you did it. Square bag. No, this it is better so use cotton cool. yarn. Yeah, but your what assembly happened? video for that was so cool because it's not like it's not a perfect rectangle or anything. It was like laid out. You had it laid out. And then it's how weird. it wraps it's around weird. itself. Oh my gosh, that was the coolest. Are you kidding? That's so neat. Okay. You're talking about oh, somebody who makes yeah. round objects and is like, that is really, really cool. I think that's awesome. I can't make stuff I with like you. <laughs> Katie's my friend. She's so nice. But the no, yarn. It's so cool. It's, Look at it. This is the shine. It's nice. I mean, I probably could have used cotton, but I didn't feel like calling to get sponsorship. I'm like, I'm at joanne's and this is what i got this is a cute bag that this is what so my daughter cute. tried to steal and i'm like do i want to give it away i don't know i love it i think it's cute it wasn't I would hard to make, it. but it annoyed me to sew together that's what makes me want to keep it yep the more work you put into something the more you want to keep it <laughs> i'm like mm, it's mine i'm not going to use it but it's mine <laughs> pretty good market bag like a like a farmer's market bag yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Lori said that looks like an eight carton with legs. <laughs> I guess it's just, it <laughs> does. <laughs> <laughs> when you get, you, it, yeah, that's the funny part about stuffed animals, but that's why you have to like write it out ahead of time because then even when it looks like totally unlike anything you want it to look like halfway through, you know, you're still on track because it still looks like your sketch or it's still following the pattern yeah. you started. Oh, I'm empty. Yeah, fill it up. <gasps> Heather says, you're the equivalent of a 3D printer <laughs> in crochet. Oh, you are. You. A really <laughs> slow 3D printer. <laughs> Very slow 3D printer. <laughs> that hopefully doesn't jam nearly as often as 3D printers tend to jam. <laughs> Wait, we had another question in here for our slow 3D printer. Where am I missing it? Oh, by my fave, the crazy poppy lady. Will the webinar be available to watch at a later date? All right. I'll go ahead and give you guys a sneak, but, um, and my VA is probably snarling at me as I say this. Uh, but yes, well, there will be a replay at 6 p.m. on Monday night. It will be available for, um, to be able to rewatch. Uh, so the, if you get, if you sign up for the webinar or if you're on the mailing list for um, the, the waitlist mailing list for Next Level Ami Groomy Design, um, you will get an email that says, hey, here's your replay if you missed this morning. So that will, you won't get it until after the webinar airs live, but there will be a replay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're about to wrap this up, but I'm going to say one more time, guys, make sure you sign up for the Star Pattern webinar and her uh, course will be live at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time tomorrow. Just in case you miss it, don't worry. I'm going to be sending you guys all the links and information about it, and I'll tell you what's included. You get a lifetime access to self-paced courses, 50 lessons, eight hours of video tutorials, 50 pages of sample patterns, worksheets, practice tools, exclusive online community of fellow uh, designers, monthly live, live events and networking, and designer challenges to spark your imagination. It should be a commercial. Good you should this. be. You're good at this. That was awesome. You guys, please make sure you sign up. But Katie, uh, is there anything you want that I leave out that? No, not at all. We This has been so fun and we always have fun together. So, <laughs> and we only got off topic like a couple of times. So that's impressive, right? And it was the beginning. Yeah. I don't know what we got to talk about. What about the air conditioning? Yeah. There's a replay at six. You'll be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and right. register if you if you get registered and if you don't get registered, you'll still get if you're on the mailing list or the wait list, you'll get an email about the replay, whether you were able to attend the webinar or not. So. All right. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this live. Please make sure you check on that free star pattern webinar down below. Absolutely free. It's definitely worth it. All right, guys, thank you so much. And me and Katie, we say bye. Bye. We'll see you next week. And soon, hopefully, we'll have some more of my other buddies here joining me next time. All right. Bye, guys.